103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Hello and welcome to Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM, right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday, June 28th, 2020. I'm Larry Rhodes, your Doubter 5, and as usual, we have on the phone, the line with us, Wombat. Hello, Wombat. I just forgot the song I was going to sing. Where did it go? <laughs> Dang it. Oh, oh, you guys ready? No, hate, right, here we go. You ready? <laughs> you ready? There Dang you go. It. Jesus loves me, oh, this goodness. I know, <laughs> for the Bible oh, tells my. me so. <laughs> this is all very Yes scary. means yes and no <laughs> means no. There you go. Well done. Hold on. Wow, face mapping these days. That's pretty cool. Oh. <laughs> All right, also, I'd be show. having a limerick for y'all. <laughs> yeah, okay. let's start with our invocation. Well, we've All got right. uh, Dread Pirate Higgs on the show with us. We got George, J.W. Kennedy, uh, Abstract Atheist, and Chad the Impaler. Uh, the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. Mm. And conversely, we also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling that you're the only non-believer in Knoxville, well, you're just not. There are several atheists, and rationalists, and free-thinking groups here in Knoxville, and we'll be telling you how you can connect with them right after the mid-show breaks. Also, did you know that we have a stream, streaming atheist TV slash video show broadcasting here in Knoxville. Did you know that one, Matt? I did know it. I did know it. And I'm so glad that you are really into obscure Japanese manga because this really needs more attention. So Spy X Family is a really great story about an assassin mom and a spy dad who adopt a psychic daughter. And like this daughter wow. knows that the mom's a, an assassin <laughs> and that the dad's a spy, mm -hmm. but they don't know that each other's a spy and an assassin. So it's mm. just like this weird counterplay with everyone yeah, they well, actually are a family that loves each other at the end of the day Spy you just keep the played out theme you, you keep it, no what are you talking about it's so good it's so good <laughs> i'm just yeah. kidding i'm totally kidding if dakota fanning no. was still acting right now yeah. this would be the dream yeah. role right. for her now this is an atheist call-in television show and has been broadcasting in knoxville for over 10 years and we'll be telling you more about how you can watch it and wombat can watch it after the mid-show break uh, if you'd like to interact with us during the show, go to fa Facebook and search for Digital Free Thought Radio Hour and use the messaging function to send us questions and comments during the broadcast. Uh, well, bet what we ha what do we have today gonna, as a topic? We're going to begin before we're going to be talking about labels. But before we begin, how about we open up with our invocation from our own Dread Pirate Higgs? Arr, threatened with burning in hell, the atheist said, "No need to yell." Until there's some proof <laughs> that you're telling the truth. I ain't buying what you're trying to sell. Hey, very good. Oh, ah, man. A lot of truth. Loving it. Oh, man. That's great. Oh, man. There we go. All right. So, hey, guys, we're going to be talking about labels today. I thought it would be good because I just posted a video um, through my backlog because we, we can't go outside and have chats with people because of the coronavirus situation. But I had a conversation with a lady about the idea of labels and her, presenting, her opinion was labels are the worst. And she was like this. She looked like, a, like your, your regular grandma, but she's like, no, I don't feel like how I look. I don't like using the labels to describe how I look. And I mean, look at you. You're, are you African Americans? Like, no, I, I prefer to be called black. This is like, oh, right, right. So, like, we have all these labels that we use to like denote who we are and, and, and use the shortcuts. People, uh, right, have a preferred gender. Uh, exactly, and we have all these shortcuts that like get us in, out of the way from really understanding who we are. And labels are the worst things, right? And I was like, no, maybe we can talk about this because maybe labels are useful in some aspects, and maybe it's something more about the mindset rather than the word that we put on each other itself. So opening up the conversation about labels and I'm going to throw it out first to Dread Pirate Higgs. Oh, wait, first, 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 George, how would you what define, is, how would you define yeah, a label? Well, I'm asking you cause it's your topic. Um, well, I don't I mean, know you've used the word before, right? Why would you define it? Well, uh, to tell you the truth, I find the word label is kind of vague. Mm. Um, it, and, and that's why I'm throwing it back to you to ask you what you had in mind when you brought it up as a topic. Um, a label is, to me, um, a word that we stick on somebody else to define them. 
Mm, okay. Yeah. Now, now let me amplify on this a little bit because I've been thinking about it recently, and that it is human nature to generalize. We we try to understand stuff. We try to pigeonhole uh, the world around us, which we do not understand. It's too hard to understand everything, and stuff's coming at us at high speed constantly. Mm. Information that we have to understand. Animals do it too, mm. you know. If a human being mistreats an animal, that animal will be wary of humans after that. Sure. Especially if two humans mistreat that animal. All humans are like that. All black people are like this. All Jews are like this. All Christians are like this. You know, um, so we, we put labels on people in an attempt to simply understand them. So I'm saying that this is human nature and that this type of labeling is at the root of prejudice, um, you know, all kinds of mistreatment of other people. We, we pigeonhole them, for instance, as non-human. And that's how the Nazis treated the Jews. Well, oh. we also have a, a societally um, shared memes, uh, ideas about certain groups, uh, most, a lot of them, which is true. I mean, I'm a, I call myself a computer program for most of my life, a computer programmer. Mm. And, uh, if I tell somebody I'm a computer programmer, they can use that label to learn an awful lot about me and my, my history and my background before I have to elaborate any further on the specifics. So yeah. they're very helpful in some ways they're, they they save a lot of time. Wait, you're saying saying you know how C++, Java, and how to turn on a computer, turn it off, and reformat, and connect? It's, it's <laughs> simpler than just saying you're a computer Pretty much programmer? most of what you just said, yes. Oh, okay. Well, all right. I, I don't know, know C++. <laughs> I don't yeah. think anyone Are does. Are they <laughs> helpful and productive in every discussion? Hmm. They are. So maybe, they can also be harmful. I'm actually interested in what Chad thinks about labels. I think this would be an interesting thing to get his weight on. Chad, have you ever used labels before? And like, what labels do you like? First of all, maybe why not? How do you, what do you think a label is? And then maybe some positive labels, negative labels. What do you think? Uh, I think, and sorry about that click there. Uh, that, that was my mouth noise that I hate. I hate it when other people do it, but I do it. <laughs> so um, let me step outside. This is kind of echoey. Apologies. Uh, labels, it seems like um, labels might just be names for models that we build. Mm -hmm. And, you know, humans being model builders, yeah, uh, it's fast thinking versus slow thinking. We do an awful lot of uh, fast thinking. We have to because we used to use it to survive. And it seems inherent. It seems like it's very difficult to get away from building models um, because they're so useful. And mm. it seems like that might be what we do with people. You know, in the past, we used to have to quickly judge whether another group of people that seemingly on the surface are different from us to find out if they're a threat or not. Mm. Seems like that might be part of where this is coming from, why we do it so much to other people that look differently, that maybe speak differently, because they're coming from a different geographic region usually. And uh, we have to quickly assess whether or not they're dangerous. Maybe. Yeah, it sounds like tribalism at play right? Yeah. Yeah. But it, it also, not everything that, you know, we can hack these things. We don't have, to, you know, these horrible things that we do that used to be useful that, you know, they, they have some modern significance and modern use as well. It's always great though, to know where these things come from and know where they can lead, I mm. think. So that's, just, that's it, powerful. even talking about it, like what we're doing, you know, awareness of what, what path these things can lead us down. Yeah. It, yeah. Like it did with I, the Nazis. I love how you said like, it's not, it's not just enough to use them. You have to know what they could be used for and where they could lead. Like that and awareness. They is, may, they mm, may con convey either uh, on purpose or accidentally. Yeah. Like you can use them dangerously or lazily or really usefully. Like they are useful. What do you think about the use, Nathan? Uh, abstract activists. I'm going to throw this out at you. What's the idea of labels in your life? I, um, a, a question popped into my head. I was wondering, is I the saw word it. truth, is, is, <laughs> the, is, the word truth is the word truth a label? 
Ooh, I feel like it is. I feel like it is. I think it I mean, probably is too. We're basically pointing at something that we can't see or objectively, you know, absolutely determine. And we're saying truth in the fourth person at best. This is like in, in concept right, right. is there. Yeah. Yeah. To me, label would be something that is um, defining something. Though when we use colloquially the word label i think of it as like i have certain value attributed to the shortcut of mm. this is, of the discussion but also i acknowledge that you have a different con- concept of what that thing is so mm. i have to be cognizant of what you think i think it is so it's like yeah. this back and forth this is why dictionaries and encyclopedias are very important yeah. It'd be nice People if we only had one dictionary instead of like meaning. competing 17 brands with dictionaries. But yeah, it'd be absolutely. nice if they didn't change. Sure. Too. It'd be nice if they weren't written by Christians. <laughs> <laughs> Just no, throw that out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, sorry to step on your toes, Nathan. But like, I thought you were going on a really good point. You're saying like there's a compromise between what your intentions is as the mm. labeler and what the interpreter is as the person who's seeing the interview. And then, and what label you use may not be what's conceived of by the person who's hearing what you're saying. And so you're never yeah. going to meet one eye to eye on anything. So like there's some risk of mislabeling when you misla- when you label something, even if you accurately label it. Right. And if we were speaking a different language, we'd be using different labels. Oh, um, man, and, yeah. and they only really work because I understand you have an understanding of what that thing is. Right. And so if we're from different cultures and we speak the same language, it could be a completely different thing. Yeah, totally. That's correct. Yeah. Especially the more abstract the concept is, the more political, the more religious, or the more philosophical it is, (laughs) the less less we can end up relating to each other, I think. I'll throw that one last question to Nathan before I head over to JW. But, like, what do you think about art as a label? Wow. Like like that giant thing behind you. (laughs) I'm sure that yeah. means something to you, right? I look at that, I'm like, wow, that's really red and black. I'm just really trying to, I'm really just trying to fill up the walls, really, in my room with the okay. tapestries. I need to get a new tapestry that's got my, like, channels logo on it. And that yeah. way, when I do my Zoom chats, I've got JW just picked the blackness in his heart. Well, well, what is, you know, uh, when, I was, when I was in my second high school, the uh, music instructor asked people to define art. Mm. We had a hell of a time. Mm. Oh, I got to go on that one. Yeah, well, uh, yeah. It covers a lot of ground. That's yeah. for sure. Well, what we came up with was simply this, uh, that art is a method of communication that transcends everyday speech. I like it. I like that. Now, I, I don't know anything better than that or worse. You know, it's a, no, I wish I, I had some you know some something better to say about it I being that. an artist and being the son of an artist and and i just don't you know jw what do you think about that are you want to weigh on that what do you think about the idea of art as a label and uh, george's definition well um um i'd say that art is i, I don't know if it's always been this way i had i don't have a um i'm like a workable knowledge of the history of words, but art seems to have become very subjective. Hmm. Maybe it always has been, maybe it hasn't, I don't know. Um, so I could see it, I could see it as a label. Um, if we're defining label labels as words we use to represent abstract things hmm. um, or a, a large area of, but, uh, I think that can can lead down um, a dangerous road. Like, like I was talking to you uh, when when you and I did an interview, uh, whatever that, that game that we played, where you where you gave me a few topics to talk to rant about. And, yeah. And um, yeah, and that that night I talked a little bit about labels. I forget what the question was that you asked me. That um, the idea of masculinity. That. It was like, what yes. does it mean to be masculine? Right. Yes. And um, and then I, it kind of it triggered the thoughts about, you know, what is masculinity? What is what is femininity? Mm. And then 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 I kind of shared my thoughts on the idea of labels. 
I think that at least my generation has a tendency to use labels to relieve themselves of the responsibility of understanding someone who believes and thinks differently than they do. They can be used for that. Yeah. Yes. That if they, um, <clears throat> uh, it, it relieves them of the spot. Like, I think it's Sam Harris that said, uh, boo, bingo, Sam Harris. Bingo. Let's make sure we got <laughs> still, it. Hold still on. Manning. Oh, it, it, is he the ownership Sam of that? Sam Harris. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap. You had that on the ready. That's uh, nice. Still manning somebody and just seeking to understand somebody. I think I, but I think like also, you guys have enlightened me. I, I kind of did have mostly a negative view on the on the term label until this discussion. So I've just got a lot of lot to think about. I, I want to answer that question that you gave me though, Ty. At some point, go for it. The one about art. Yeah, I think my three my three favorite abstract nouns are truth, art, and love. Because okay. those three, those three words, <laughs> you're looking at me real, all weird. Well, those three I feel like words. I feel like you're the kind of guy who had that tattooed people. on your body or like up in your bathroom framed, like those oh, words. Really? By them. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Maybe>. <laughs> like with macrame, with like birdseed on them and it's like organic. Those and words, like... they carry a lot of weight for a lot of people. And, sure, yeah. Um, tr- I mean, if you have ask people what they mean by truth. I mean, you'll get a lot of different answers and you'll get a lot of different answers for the word love too. I'd say my answer for art would be um, all that, whatever moves you something, a product that somebody makes that's moving in some way. Mm. Um, And that's why it can be, you know, something can be art to me because I find it moving and you can be like, that's just a blank canvas with hardly anything on it. How is that moving to you? And it wouldn't be art to you but it'd be art to me. And in that you sense, know, and, it is relative and to the artist. It's unlike truth. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Does it take an this... artist to create art though? I mean, can you, so is, is art no, defined there's... strictly as something created by humans? Well, there's no. found and art the, too. I hope there have to you be know, intention as well. That's a really good question. And I suppose because it's an abstract noun, it might mean something different to other people. And I'm open-minded to hearing what other people mean by that. And mm, yeah. uh, my, my uh, my definition would change with the person I'm talking to because it's a label, right? right. So if somebody right. else tells me their definition of what the word art means and they're really specific about it and it resonates with me in some way, I can adopt that for purposes of our conversation yeah, and go exactly. with that. With that Dude, that's the perfect that. SC mentality. Absolutely, yeah. Hell it's yeah. Just like, hey, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'll just take whatever we're doing just for this conversation. I'll work with that because I want to communicate with yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So if somebody um, said a waterfall is art, I'd be like, Okay. Sure. I we'll mean, work if with you that. want to say that. Well, it, but, it's yeah. like found art or found object that uh, the finder thinks is art, artistically worthy. Sure. And then and communicates that to other people. He didn't create it, but he appreciates it. And uh, maybe other yeah. people will too. When I hear well, that, well, I yeah, like the accidental is art. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like the idea of accidental art. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm, as you guys know, I'm in the middle of flipping a house and on the floor in the living room of this house that I'm working in, there's all this paint speckle and concrete speckle and an adhesive that's on the floor. And I picked up a piece of sheetrock drywall off of the floor and found this section that was just as beautiful as anything I'd ever seen um, <laughs> anyone try to paint. And wow. so, and I created that unknowingly. Oh. Um, is it only art when someone identifies it as such? Right. I mean, it seems like maybe, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not trying to be, contrarian um, no 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 contrarian that's, no it's a great point just defining defining i think is what we, what you were asking what is art mm-hmm. i don't i don't know but i know i find beauty in in all kinds of things both created by humans and this is going to sound silly especially coming from the background that i do created by humans or created by nature and you know i don't see a difference um we have to create a difference. And we, we need to keep in mind it doesn't have to be beautiful. It doesn't have to be pretty or, or have beauty. It can have meaning and, and movement yeah. and, and even horror. Uh, mm, and horror. still be art. Sure. Yeah. yeah. 
I was going to throw a question out to Dread Pirate, but he's apparently abandoned ship for just a couple of seconds. So, I'll, <laughs> hey, I'll throw this Man back overboard. at <laughs> <laughs> Habeas. Do you, I, yeah. to, to build on top of this, I think like someone says, hey, this waterfall is beautiful. Um, that to me sounds like, hey, natural processes mm-hmm. can generate something that's really extraordinary or science can be beautiful. When I hear that, mm-hmm. it's like, Thank you for saying that, because if you ask me like what some of the most beautiful things are, it's in nature. Like I, I, I'm not saying like you're you're the seven year old, you know, uh, Thanksgiving bird that was drawn with like, you know, your girl's outlined hand is not high standard of art. But like when I see like, you know, a galaxy that's been taken by a picture from a, a, a photo, uh, like a, a spectroscopic microscope or telescope. Or like a black and white image from an atomic force microscope, or like just mm. like these outlines of like this is how fat gets turned into energy for your body to work, and it has mm. all these different steps and all of these course of like enzymes working together. I'm like looking at all this. I'm like, I can see why someone would look at this and say this is intelligent design. Like this would have to be created Tr- by like a high power guy. Trust me, dude. Pro- I live in Portland. <laughs> and I get it's like all the times the golden all ratio stuff. Right. And, uh, oh yeah, yeah, I get that. Yeah. You're bombarded by something that's just so inconceivably yeah. beautiful and complex. You're right. just like, this has to be art. But even mm-hmm. though it's not created by an all powerful being, or like there's no evidence yeah. to support that, yeah. it's still an amazing thing. Like that doesn't yeah, take away anything totally. from this part. But Wombat, think about the outlines of hands we find in caves that are 30,000 years old. That's <sighs> definitely art. Those are terrible <laughs> artists though. Like, oh, come on, guy. You're just, that's graffiti. <laughs> Gotta start Ancient somewhere. Graffiti. They did that in 2020. Animalism they get arrested. Mother nature's work. <laughs> Dread Pirate, I wanted to throw the question at Art at you, but you, uh, you had, had one I've asked for a quick well, I was, I was busy writing something down. Ah, and, okay. Uh, and, and it's this. Art, for me, mm. the external expression of an internal impression. Ooh, I like it. I like it. Yeah, yeah I like that too. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think about labels? What do you think about art? Like, well, is art a label or what do you think about labels in general? Well, art, yeah, I, I think it would be a label. Um, you know, it's almost like uh, just placeholders for meaning uh, labels are, right? It's mm-hmm. like, uh, you know, a shingle outside of a store. It, it, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't say definitively what is what you can expect to see inside. Right. But, uh, you know, if, uh, if you see a shingle that says apothecary yeah. or a pharmacist or something like that, yeah. you can, there's, there's some things that you could you know, confidently expect to find within it. Mm. Um, but, you know, and there again, there you have the change between an apothecary and a pharmacist, you know. So yeah. uh, labels change as meanings change and meanings change, uh, you know, according to how, how we use those labels, right? Nice. Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree. Like homeopathic sure. cure versus med- uh, clinically trial tested FDA approved. Exactly. Right. Like yeah. yeah. Cool. Hey, we're at the bottom of the half hour. Delta five. Why don't you take us out? We'll come right back to this. Hey, this is digital free thought radio hour and WOZO radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Going to take a short break. We'll be right back. See you then.
you don't want to see the card fall too Oh, I'll be good I'll do what I should To stay safe is what it's all for Hello and welcome back to Digital Free Thought Radio Hour and WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. I'm Daughter 5 and today is Sunday, June 28th, 2020. Welcome to the second half of the show. Uh, let's talk about the Free Thought groups that you can join here in Knoxville. First, there's the Atheist Society of Knoxville. Founded in 2002, we're in our 18th year. ASK has over a thousand members now and you can find us online by searching for Knoxville Atheists or go to knoxvilleatheist.org. If you can, uh, if you don't have a meetup group or an atheist group in your town, then you can just start one. You go. No, that's not how you do that. One. Do that again. How do you do that? How do you do it? How do you do it? Do it again from the start. Okay. If you don't live in Knoxville, you can still go to meetup and search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one. Start, start one. Start one. <laughs> Nobody joined except Wombat. Thank you, Wombat. I'm back to another. Back. <laughs> Another large free thinking group here in Knoxville are the Rationalists of East Tennessee, and they've been around for more than 20 years. Just go to rationalist.org and click on upcoming events to find out what they're up to. Earlier in the show, we said we talked about the Atheist Call-In TV show or video show. Well, we have an free. Atheist Caller TV show? <laughs> what? It could happen. <laughs> been going on for over 10 years. First broadcast on the local TV channel. Uh, community access TV, but now it's on YouTube, and uh, you can find it by find by searching for Free Thought Coalition of Knoxville, or Free Thinkers United Coalition. Um, you can find also archives of their show on YouTube, where Fan has been posting them. If you're interested in getting involved with this TV show or radio show, <coughs> excuse me, you can come to an ASK meeting or RAT meetup and talk to us about it. You can be our next co-host or guest. With, with us on the show, we have Wombat, our co-host, and we also have J.W. Kennedy, uh, Chad the Impaler, well, he's gone, Abstract Atheist, George, and uh, Dread Pirate Higgs. Welcome all. And we were talking about labels. Should yeah. we go back to more labels? Yeah, so one of the biggest labels that I hate personally, and I think would be, mm -hmm. I think would be good is if we did a roundtable on everyone's top three abstract uh, um, nouns. nouns. Cause I yeah, love that thing I that you're doing. That, yeah. Cause mine will be completely yeah. different than all those things that you're saying. That's one of the reasons why I started the channels. That's why I gave my channel the name. Yeah. It's, it's Cause so, I was fascinated with abstract nouns. Because I already set this up. I'm just going to do this corny thing real quick. I hate it when people call me a pineapple. Cause I hate the pineapple logo. That's not <laughs> cool. You just can't call people pineapples. Right. That's a theme. <laughs> All right. Anyway, that's it. That so, is cool. Uh, <laughs> just keep it that way the whole time. I love that filter. I'm also a pickle. Hey. Uh, okay. So. Uh, too what? What is <laughs> Doubter Five? Your top three nouns uh, slash labels. Three. Yeah, that like you think are the most important. They don't have to define you, but like as what was it for uh, abstract activists? It was. Oh, for love. me, for myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was your uh, well, the one septuagenarian. Um, um, atheist, of course, that's a big label. That's a and, big one. And uh, programmer. I love computers and I love making them do what I want to do. Would you say those are three important to you? They don't have to define who you are. They could just be what you think are three labels that oh. are important. Well, one I was going <clears> to <throat> throw out there was faith. 
Mm. A lot of people throw faith around like it's every, like all the time they use it, it means the same thing when it doesn't. It's got several different definitions, but um, it, it's, it's, it's something that needs to be defined in when you're using the word. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, yeah, that's a big one. Uh, JW, what do you think are your top three uh, abstract nouns slash labels? No audio, my friend. I thought you said you fixed it. I told them to fix it and work on it. <laughs> we'll, no we'll, audio. Give you, we'll give them some time to work on that. Dread Pirate, what, what are your top three uh, well, nouns slash labels? Don't fix what's not broken, JW. <laughs> So, uh, well, I would go with uh, faith, belief, and uh, pastafarian. Okay, what I we talked about faith before. What's what's the difference between belief versus faith? Well, I mean, you know, if strictly speaking, uh, faith is uh, belief in the absence of evidence. Mm. Um, you know, if you take accept that as a definition, and then belief is, you know, based on evidence. So, yeah, um, I think those two terms are often. Uh, used interchangeably by people who haven't given serious thought mm. about the fact that those things are different. <laughs> Equivocated yeah. as it were. I like that. Yeah. And then Pasifarian, what's, what's the value of that as a label? Is there a lot of misconceptions about Pasifarian or? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Lots of misconceptions. Um, <laughs> you know, well, what? <laughs> I don't understand how there could be a single one. What are you talking about? For the horde. <laughs> um, yeah, no, uh, you know, Pastafarians uh, are treated, um, you know, as a, a group of people by a lot of people as just mocking other people's religions. Mm. When I think it's a legitimate uh, organization uh, concerned with the separation of church and state. And, you know, as uh, the influence of, uh, you know, religion is so pervasive in our culture uh, th across the world, um, it's a, it's an important uh, thing to struggle for in my view. And so we're, you know, the important thing we're trying to do is establish pastafarianism as, as something that, uh, people can respect and not just, uh, jeer at. Very nice. Yeah. George, what's your three, uh, abstract nouns? I am blanking out. Gentlemen, I'm sorry. I cannot say a word about this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Fair enough. This is why I love this topic. I'm having so I'm hard. having an I'm having an ADD moment, and my my mind is flying around. So, so I'll tell you some. That I, we've only talked a couple of times, but I've noted that you use like New Yorker, Jewish, uh, artist, musician on a number of times. Like, do any of those? <laughs> Thank you. you. Like, yes. Yeah. Um. Well. Yeah. Okay. So. Labels are convenient <laughs> hmm. because um, I have to redefine myself at, at the age that I am looking yeah. back at my life. I'm not a youngster anymore by any means. And um, uh, I have defined myself as a musician at times because it's been handy, hmm. but I've done other things. I'm, I'm a creative person. Um, I'm not just a musician. So, um, I, okay, how, can, what, I'm going to talk about labels. Yeah. Hey, I'll throw I something started, you. You were raised atheist by default by parents who didn't have spiritual beliefs, but you said you also have a Jewish background at the same time too? Well, yeah, my genes are, genetically, I'm Jewish. And Do you feel like some people might misconstrue the label of Jewish as saying that you're a person of faith at the same time, too? And like, what? Oh, what absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. They, they, will, they will misconstrue that I'm a person of faith. They will misconstrue that I am a Zionist, mm -hmm. you know, whereas it's nothing, almost nothing could be further from the truth, you know. Yeah. That I that that could misconstrue that I hate Palestinians, which I do not. Um, I guess I have an imaginary conversation in my mind. I project the label upon myself and then say, "What is this other person thinking of me and thinking that this means?" And um, I have mentioned to a couple of people, I, I don't tell people that I'm an atheist mm -hmm. where I live, 
um, I've mentioned, so I've said I'm Jewish. Mm. And they, a couple of, couple of times, people have reacted in shock and horror when I said that. Now, I'm not used to this, you know. Uh, I don't know what was going through their minds. Maybe it's just that they've never met a Jew before. And, and they don't know what to say. And you all kinds really of strong things. atheist vibes about you, and they're just disappointed. They're just like, oh, well, I thought I, he was one of us. I, you know, I've heard it said that to to a, to any religious person, somebody of the other of another religion is an atheist. True. Well, the I, the or, original usage of the word atheist was by the Romans uh, uh, labeling Christians because they didn't believe in the Roman gods. It's true. It's true. So, I mean, the Christians I mean, were the first atheists. What pagans and heathen, <laughs> heathen literally means someone who doesn't believe in my God. Like that's, that's, that is it. JW, your, your mic is still out. Unfortunately, uh, you say something. No, we can't hear you, my buddy. But if you knew sign language, we would be able to handle this already. So, just saying. But you are All getting right. a little gold bar at the oh. bottom of your screen. Maybe it's the volume issue. Yeah, just raise up that volume, baby. All right. Uh, yeah. Eric, are you here? I Who's am there? here. I'm, I'm just we're kind of talking. lurking today. But... We're t oh, okay, okay. We won't no. put you on the spot. Yeah. Then. But, uh, well, well I, um, you know, I, 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 we started talking about this at the beginning of the show, and mm. And um, I'm thinking about, you know, what, what I said at that point was that as human beings and living creatures, really, <clears throat> we generalize to try to make sense out of stuff. Mm. And, I, and I have an ongoing um, confusion about how to deal with my neighbor across the street who was flying a Confederate battle flag when I moved here. And um, has proved to be an, a wonderful neighbor, maybe the best neighbor I've ever had. And yet he generalizes uh, against other groups of people. Yeah. And and so um, I watched the process. Now, recently he said to me uh, that people are peeing in the street in San Diego and in New York. And this is just fine with the authorities. And I said, having lived in both of these places, I said, that's preposterous. It's ridiculous. He said, no, 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 it's true. Um, he has an image in his mind of people who live in New York and people who live in California. Sure. A whole set of generalizations of, of these debauched humans. Um, I think you're raising a really good point. Like, a label is just what we title a generalization, but you could still have the generalization and not have the label for it, and it can still that's be correct. a dangerous thing. Like that yeah, generalization label, can still be dangerous even without the label. Right. The label is is simply a name for the mm. generalization. The generalization okay. is the mindset, and that's what needs to be opened. Like you need beautiful. To yeah. Yeah. I'm glad. I'm I'm really glad we're having this discussion because this the the issue of you know, uh, what do I want to do here, let's say? Um, I am finding that I am appreciating this person as a human being. I'm, I'm appreciating his good qualities, and he does have them. And so how do I bring him along, <laughs> you know? Mm. Let's sure. say, it may I want be... to be in... Yeah. Uh, I thought, like, it's not your responsibility to, how do I put this? change anyone's mind it should be everyone's prerogative to have the best mindset possible to work with reality and 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 you can't change anyone's mind and it's not your goal to change anyone's mind the best thing that you should be willing to do is be willing to have or uh understand what it need what you need to do to have a reasonable conversation with people who might be operating under bias that's not beneficial and just say hey why not work to a higher standard? Like if you can just ask the right questions and not put yourself in charge of changing anyone's mind, it takes all the weight off of you and gives you the opportunity to maybe catch maybe your own biases. If you just really care about the best way of knowing true things from false things. Yeah. Um, so when I was that way, I, I, I remember being just miserable, a miserable oh, person. So you do um, now. I'll you'd say be that. helping them in that sense too. What's that? 
you do look happier now. I'll say that. Thanks. <laughs> Cause I remember being in that mindset of just believing everything I was told and I just hyper fixate on every negative thing that came my way. You yeah. can really help this person. Like, you know, you said, you know them personally. And I, I think, you know, I, SE has helped me a lot personally and uh, helped me build uh, stronger and uh, more humble relationships and friendships. One people. thing I like to do, uh, if, if someone comes to me with a misconception, mm. uh, like people are peeing in the streets in these two cities, uh, and you know it's not true, the first thing I ask them is, who told you that? Because then you or can tell well, that's you not that true, it's question. a lie, and you might want to consider the other things that they're telling you. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, look at them I, twice. I'm going to just uh, say you know, one thing because it's also SE. I love SE, but instead of being like, <laughs> who told you, ask them, how did you find that out? And if they give you a person, at least then they gave you a person, but you're not begging the question that it was a person ahead yeah. of time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. George, what do you got? And then we'll throw up to JW because his mic's working and I want to know what his three labels are. Yeah. What do you got? <laughs> Well, it, I, I'm sorry. It, it, this opens a whole Pandora's box. Oh my gosh! Um, so I'm 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 debating with myself whether to. We'll be here next week. Let me just put it this if way: the good Lord I, I, wills, I, I, Tyrone. I'm, I'm sure. Why not? Into hey, even show. if he doesn't, this, I'm still here. This fellow's, um, this fellow has used the term fake news to me. And so this shows a little bit about where he's coming from. And I've been, I've been looking at the issue of um, the, the parallels between Donald Trump and Adolf Hitler. The, oh my gosh. The, uh, the, um, the methods that Trump is reusing that were successful for Hitler. And one of them was attacking the press and accusing the press of oh, spreading yes. falsehoods, mm -hmm. you see. And, and and the uh, where this Pandora's box opens is that this gentleman's daughter happens to be a newspaper reporter. She went to J school, so she's got a degree in it. She's worked for at least two papers, and um, and so when Trump says that the press is the enemy of the people, he's actually talking about this guy's daughter. Mm. Yeah, and. And so, um, yeah, okay, here's a label, the press, you know, yeah. I mean, um, but George, we'll, let's get, we'll get into this more for sure. No doubt. Uh, and don't forget, we I got four ish months. talk about the news someday. We got four you, months. George. We got four <laughs> or five ish months before we can vote again. But JW, what's your, uh, three labels that you hold to high esteem? So three labels that I hold the highest standard, um, well, uh, abstract activist has some really great ones. I do. I do hold survey. to truth, truth Never and love, um, <laughs> knowledge. Yeah. Uh, I get to, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm a lyricist and I, I write poetry. So it's hard to kind of like, you're asking me like what, it's I like gave you so much time to think about are. this JW. What do you got? Come, give me some, give me some. <laughs> You, um, this, this is like the third time. Knowledge. Oh, okay. Um, knowledge. Hope. Hope. God, Whoa! Love, look at I this love guy. Hope. I love hope. I don't know what I'd do without that word. Mm. Um, hope. And. Uh, and. Strength. Okay. I What's guess. hope? I think hope is like the most passionate one for you. What is hope? Hope is kind of like faith. Um, I think they're, they're in the same family of terms. It's, mm. it's, I'm not, tomorrow's not here or next year isn't here, but I, I'm going to keep working and keep doing things in hope that things will get better and continue to get better. And in hope that I will, you know, be strong enough and cognitively aware enough and strong enough to, you know, complete my goals and all that. Goals is a good one too. Not to put my own label on this, but I can tell you how I'm interpreting it. It sounds like hope is just intellectual, intellectually honest faith. Yeah, um, or I was going to say faith <laughs> plus reason or yeah. faith, faith plus reasoning. Plus, faith plus yes. glasses, basically. Yeah, or you could say it's, <laughs> it's a mental exercise to buoy up your, your spirit toward the future. Right. Uh, yes. Spirit's a good one, too. Love spirit. Okay, okay. 
Uh, let's see. Did we get everybody? Oh, I can do mine real quick. I would love, I think my number one is doubt. And the thing is, your, your Nathan, your, your favorite is truth. And there's no uh, great, yeah, probably there's no greater ally. Truth, love and, yeah. There's no greater tangible ally for truth than doubt. Than doubt. Like if there is an sure. army of truth, doubt is the mm -hmm. vanguard, the general, the infantry, everything like the tip of every spear. Doubt is there in service of truth. They're not at odds with each Absolutely. other. Absolutely. Doubt is always working for truth. And because of that, it's important to realize how much we need to rely on doubt because it seems like it's the easiest thing. The first thing people are willing to dismiss when they come into mm -hmm. an unknown situation, they're like, Oh, I'm doubtful, but who cares? Or maybe it's better. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, uh, um, Wombat, Wombat yeah. is, um, is uh, doubt hmm. the opposite of faith? I think doubt's the opposite of confidence. Yeah. Yeah. Doubt is the yeah, thing that I'm always also, uh, uh, appealing to. Uh, doubt is the, the, always the thing I'm appealing to when somebody um, and I have a disagreement about what the word truth means. Mm. Um, it's, I appeal to what we positively know is false. Yeah. To help me course correct our similar definition of what tr the truth is. Yeah. Um, yeah. So like, you know it's what? possible that some of my beliefs are not true. And that's what leads me to believe things are true. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. That's like the thing that's going to break the chains to help you get to truth. Mm -hmm. And you need to have mm -hmm. that. And the funniest thing is it gets no credit whatsoever. It doesn't ask for credit either. It's just this amazing, it's this amazing sensation of, uh, not now, <laughs> or I don't think you can fight that. Guy, <laughs> <buddy>. <laughs> or maybe that's one drink too many. All these things are in the service of helping you be a better person. That is always working to help you be better. You can always have too much doubt. That's true. But yeah. you know, it's always in your interest. It's always working to tread. Like that's never the guy that's like, you should punch that dude and then try to become president. <laughs> and yeah. then put these people in cages mm -hmm. like that's yeah. never doing I've, that that's a, i've had okay. pens made up to hand out for the atheist society of knoxville mm -hmm. and they they say on the side it says your doubt is not satan tempting you yeah uh, it's it's reality trying to emerge and set you free <laughs> right can I get oh, a pen? You, you can fit all those words on a pen <laughs> <It's> <laughs> <small>. <laughs> one of those pens please that's very good yeah. also you'll never see like the love health and happiness those like three word mantras you'll never see doubt in any of those like bedroom <laughs> mantras i might yeah, want to make one feels good why it's not it should it should, should. Well, <laughs> should right? i mean yeah, that could be like whoa that you just protect me that's the guy who's like oh hey hold that hold back hold back the word skeptic i have you know, questions i've got questions <laughs> yeah S skepticism comes to my mind you know yeah. To be distinguished from cynicism. Oh, very good. Okay. Which, yeah. which laws many, many people can distinguish. Too. Yeah. I also, I also like science as a term. And then maybe wealth would probably be the next one, only in the sense that a lot of people don't understand. We don't teach financial responsibility in school. Mm. And I think if we did, a lot of things would change both on how we see the world objectively, how we understand politics, like uh, how, how we can like re refrain from marginalizing people and being like in a, healthier society if we just understand you know what wealth is versus like i have a lot of money it's like so what you have a lot of debt too <laughs> you gotta balance, you gotta balance sure. that out buddy all right all sure. right all right uh, <laughs> it's why it's why when you see like a rapper with a gold-plated helicopter it's like okay that is a rich dude but when you see bill gates wearing like goodwill glasses and a sweater it's like that's wealth like there's a mm -hmm. difference here he lives yeah, in a cabin in the woods you're 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 bankrupt in your third mansion. There's a difference here. Yeah. All right. And how about how about Donald Donald Trump with a a huge building that's just got bling all over it? Yeah. What's that? We we can get into it. We can get into it. We maybe we should just have one president Joe Bash Bash. <laughs> and, uh, hopefully we can do it this after November though. Like or else I just won't be in the mood. <laughs> all right. We're well, at the, where is the love? The episode. Oh, yeah, we get we're, top of the hour now. Yeah, we're at the top of the hour. I'm trying to end the show. Dread Pirate, where we can find you? Where can we find you, buddy? Well, well you can find me on Mind Pirate on YouTube. Uh, this show right now is being live streamed. 
Nice. And then uh, it'll be saved and it'll be there for you to watch, uh, you know, late night eating popcorn. Very cool. Very Canadian. Well said. Uh, ah. JW, where can we find you? Uh, two YouTube channels and two Twitter Twitter accounts. Um, the uh, JW Kennedy, two tw- uh, a YouTube and Twitter, and Speak Your Beautiful Mind, YouTube and Twitter. Nice. Content coming soon. Um, com- uh, the comedy clubs are opening up here in the Nashville area slowly but surely. So JW Kennedy, that channel is going to have something very soon, hopefully. And, and also uh, be safe. Yeah. 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 Always, A-A-S-E, always. where can we find you? Yo, you can find me on YouTube. Uh, I've got under Abstract Activist S-E. Also nice. on Twitter at abstra- Abstract underscore S-E. Nice. Very cool. Batter 5. Uh, George, I'm not skipping you. How about this? George, what's a song or uh, something we should check out in the next week? Um, I have nothing out there. All right, he's got so, nothing. Yeah. <laughs> that or five. Okay. Okay. Uh, feel free to close up the show. I'm Let's Chat. We All can right. see you next week. You can find me on Twitter at, at Five Minute Chat. All right, go for it. Okay. Uh, I do have a book out there. It's called uh, Atheism What's, it all, What's it all about? It's on Am- Amazon. Uh, be sure to visit my blog at digital three th- digitalfreethought.com. Click mm-hmm. on the blog button. It has all of our shows, our archives, atheist songs, many articles. You can also send questions to this show by writing to askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org, and we'll answer them in future shows. I also like to uh, tell you that we are we have our podcast on uh, podcast.com, in on iTunes, everything. Stitcher, Luminary, iHeart, all over a place. YouTube, and as a reminder, SoundCloud, all sorts of stuff. Yep. Right. And as a reminder, I like to tell everybody, everybody's going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it <laughs> when you they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. And we'll see you next week right here on WOZO Radio 103.9 PFM Wednesday evenings at 7 o'clock. So we'll see you next week. Say bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Stay bye. rational. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye.